Hi guys, welcome back to Nairobi Legal Insights. In today's video, we are going to be continuing with succession law in Kenya, specifically forms of wills within the Republic of Kenya. Our focus uh, for this particular video is going to be on forms of wills, uh, specifically oral wills. We are going to be looking at what conditions need to be fulfilled for an oral will to actually be a valid oral will uh, within the meaning of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya. When it comes to oral wills, there are certain conditions that have to be met uh, for this oral will to be considered a valid oral will within the meaning of uh, Section 9 of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya. Number one, you need to acknowledge that no oral will shall be valid unless it is made before two or more competent witnesses. And we are going to be going into the details of understanding who a competent witness is. Number two, the testator, meaning the person who makes the will, must actually die within a period of three months uh, from the date of making the will. So these are the two conditions that have to be met uh, for an, uh, an oral will to be considered a valid oral will. Now, you might be wondering, what is the rationale for the law providing uh, that a person who makes an oral will must die within a period of uh, three months? Remember that this is a, a reasonable period uh, for a testator to actually put his um, stuff in order meaning that uh, within this window of time, you can actually organize your affairs uh, before you pass on. Now, there is a proviso under Section 9 of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya that actually um, provides for privileged oral wills. And privileged oral wills only apply to members of armed forces or merchant marine uh, during a period of active service. So the key word here is that you must be in active service. Now, as far as privileged wills are concerned, they do not have to conform to the strict requirements of oral wills we've talked about previously. But remember, privileged oral wills apply to a specific group of people, meaning that even if a, a soldier who is in active service in Somalia goes ahead to make a privileged oral will, that will does not conform to the requirements we previously stated out. So even if uh, that particular person goes ahead to die after a period of a three months having made um, a privileged will, a privileged oral will, that will be considered valid. So the overall objective here is for you to at least get an understanding and a distinction between an oral will and a privileged oral will. This particular will applies to a specific uh, group of people and it may not actually conform to the strict requirements uh, that actually are required of an oral will. Number two, one thing you need to appreciate under Section 9.2 of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya is that no oral will shall be valid insofar as it is contrary to any written will which the testator has made. Remember that here if a testator has made uh, a written will, uh, anything that is actually contrary in his, in his oral will will not actually be valid. So the content of that oral will will not be valid because they contradict the written will. So remember that here you need to appreciate uh, that um, a written will will supersede an oral will at all times. In terms of uh, privileged wills, we need to appreciate that much as they do not conform to the strict requirements of uh, oral wills, uh, at least the bare minimum is that uh, you must be in active service, meaning that if you are a soldier, uh, you can only make a valid a privileged will when you're in active service and the rationale for these wills not conforming to the strict requirements that we started out by um, discussing under oral wills is that uh, remember soldiers uh, work under tension and in a, in a period of war you may not even have those two competent witnesses and so because of the tension surrounding the work of soldiers then they are able to actually make these privileged wills that may not conform to the strict legal requirements uh, which were discussed under oral wills. Number two, you need to appreciate that uh, not anybody can actually make a privileged oral will and under section 9 with the proviso I've provided in the previous slide you can actually tell that only um, soldiers uh, or merchant marine in the period of active service can qualify to make a privileged oral will. Remember that uh, the law tries to minimize the formal requirements as far as privileged rules are concerned, but at least, as you can see, uh, there, there are still minimum requirements set. 
uh, meaning that you must at least be in active service as a member of armed forces for you to qualify to make a privileged or a will. Just a few points to note, the date of making an oral will is very critical because it's upon this date that we start to count the three months. And the only exception we have as far as a time is concerned is when it comes to marinas uh, whose oral privileged wills do not comply to these strict legal requirements. So basically the takeout point here is that the life of an oral will is only three months. Beyond that, it is not a valid oral will. And we need to appreciate that the maker of that oral will should die within a period of three months of its making for it to be valid. And if you want to appreciate a concept of um, oral wills and understanding how critical uh, time is, please refer to the case of Elizabeth Wanjiko Munge to see that um, actually the court will look out for the date when that will was made. Because without that date, how do we count the three months? Yeah. So read this case to appreciate the interpretation of the court when it comes uh, to how uh, important is the debt of making an oral will. This is more of an overview of what we've discussed uh, previously regarding the period of three months. When it comes to challenges of oral wills, remember oral wills are intangible and very hard to prove. How do you actually prove the content of the oral will before people or before a court of law? How do you uh, prove what um, who the beneficiaries were according to that particular will. It's very hard because it's intangible. And the other thing is uh, the time factor that has been set up as far as oral wills are concerned. Past three months, an oral will is no longer valid. So these are the challenges that come uh, with making an oral will. In our next uh, video, we are going to be looking at oral wills that have been reduced into writing. So please remember to subscribe so that you receive notifications uh, when we post a new video. And you can also follow us on our Twitter page for active engagement. Uh, this is the handle provided here. Uh, thank you.